this session i'm going to go deeper into personal prayer pay attention listen carefully to what i'm telling you the first enemy that you will face in personal prayer is human nature or what jesus called the flesh the flesh will not allow you to pray human nature is opposed to the spirit spirit wants you to pray but the human nature is opposed to it they'll not allow you to pray look at what the scripture says galatians chapter 5 verse number 17 what a human nature wants is opposed to what the spirit wants what the spirit wants is opposed to what the human nature wants these two are enemies this means you cannot do what you want to do you may want to pray but you cannot do it this is why jesus said the spirit is willing the flesh is weak the spirit is willing flesh is weak now therefore you cannot you know i will show you various stages in personal prayer as you proceed in personal prayer first human nature will trouble you then the spirit will take control but providing you don't give up on the way providing you do not give up on the way make this your aim i will settle for nothing else nothing less than the embrace of god i want only my god settle for nothing less than this I just want only the embrace of my God more than the embrace of my husband my wife my children or anyone I want settle for nothing less than God himself settle for nothing less than God himself not the consolation of your best friend of your best prayer group member nothing I want only him other you will be able to make it if you keep this as your aim other human nature will distract you will distract you understand no so you can touch god only in the spirit because the bible says god is spirit john chapter 4 verse number 24 god is spirit only by the power of his spirit can people worship him so we may make outward things no we may bow before him we may kneel every time we cross a cross even these are all outward things see they're good but if the inward the spirit you are not worshiping him you will never experience him all those outward mutterings will not help but if you are worshiping in spirit then those prayers that bowing everything will be powerful otherwise it is main main just useless just for the, to show others to impress others you understand no so therefore you can worship god only in spirit that is why the bible says pray in the spirit always ephesians chapter 6 verse number 18 pray at all times in the spirit what is the meaning of this pray in the spirit it means first of all when you pray there will be a time where you will pray in human nature or to use the words of our lord you will pray in the flesh first always will come the flesh the physical will come first then the spiritual the physical will come first 1 corinthians chapter 15 verse number 46 it is not the spiritual that comes first but the physical then comes the spiritual so therefore first comes what so when you are praying first will come the flesh let me give you an example let us imagine this is jesus huh? when you pray actual prayer in the spirit is just kneel down. this is praying in the spirit at this stage you're not aware of anything except the presence of god your personal prayer has to be like this but it does not happen like this because when he, this boy starts praying he begins to pray his personal prayers kneel 
You actually want to go there. But as he's praying, he starts praying. Maybe in a chapel. Maybe in your bedroom. Maybe any other place. The moment he starts praying, who will start troubling him first? The flesh. See? So he'll be distracted. Suddenly he'll remember, I didn't read my WhatsApp messages. Or has someone sent that? So he goes to see his WhatsApp messages. See, he's getting distracted. Can you see? The flesh is distracting him. Or he continues like that only. But again and again he's looking at the watch. Again and again looking at the watch, conscious of the time. The flesh is not allowing him to pray. So remember, first always, human nature, or I'm using the word our Lord used, flesh will never allow you to pray. You'll sit there, you'll feel hot, suddenly he feels hot. Is this thing. He's praying, mind is roaming around on what happened in office. Yesterday what his wife said to him, see? Human nature is now distracting him. It doesn't matter. He may take the rosary to say a rosary, but while saying the Hail Marys, his mind is here and there. And this evening I have to meet brother and this thing and this thing. Human nature is distracting. Not allowing him to concentrate. No? Still he continues. Say, he still continues. No? Starts feeling hungry. Say, okay, I'm feeling hungry. I think I'll, I'll just eat something and come back. He gets up, goes to eat a sandwich. When he comes back, he has to start all over again from here. All this progress made is gone. Start over again. No? Or he continues like that, huh? and he's still getting distracted, remembering how his boss fought with him. And how could my wife say this to me? And something worries about his children. No? Suddenly, maybe today he has... Maybe today there's a WhatsApp message from my son. Or from some business colleague. It'll be late if I, see, I don't see it. I better see it now. He gets up. He goes. And he sees the WhatsApp message. When he comes back, he has to start all over again. See? Human nature, the flesh is not allowing him to speak. It'll be dis he'll distract you like anything by the fan or no fan or feeling hot or clothes are tight or memories. This is memories. This one is not talking to me, that one is not talking to me, they're treating to me like this. Like, see, distracting here. Not allowing you to proceed. But despite everything, when he controls himself to remain there in prayer, no, he's moving forward. He's going closer. No, at a particular point, suddenly he feels sleepy. Goes to doze. No? But doesn't leave the place. Continues. He's going closer. If he's foolish enough, while well, dozing to say, okay, after I'll pray and go back. Or... I just want to take a little nap, and then I'll pray after the little. When you come back at five o'clock to pray, you start all over again. And I promise you, again there will be distractions. Finally, he will not allow you to progress closer. But if you persist, and you remain, then what happens is, though he's distracting you, you persist. A particular point comes, let us say a particular line is crossed, beyond which human nature cannot interfere. At that time, suddenly, an overwhelming interest in the Lord. Suddenly your mind is just locked up in the Lord. No? It doesn't matter whether someone is roaming around, someone is shouting at home. And goes deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. Praying in the Spirit. See? If to reach this stage, if to reach this stage from here, to reach this stage from here till the point 
human nature cannot affect him it takes 45 minutes today if he prays again tomorrow it will take him less time for the spirit to take control next day even little lesser but he takes a break he does it for two days then he gives a holiday to personal praying when he starts he'll have to start all over again it's going to take a long time so therefore regular praying that's why i said discipline very important enables him a time will come later after months and years it will not take long to directly resist the flesh and go straight and experience pray in the spirit no yeah. this is what the lord wants he doesn't want all those long things he wants enjoy my presence in this stage you know you're totally relaxed in god as augustine said you rest in him now as jesus himself said come i will give you rest this is it no activity no work all that missions that we are doing can never give you this that is work part but being with jesus can do this and at this stage you no know, all worries what this one did to me that one did to me i have him you no know? i have him he is with me it doesn't matter let them do what they want you understand now your experience what it means to be in the father's bosom i don't have to tell you further automatically slowly changes will start taking place in his prayers his prayers will become more intercessory in nature less for himself for his family his wife his cousins his brothers more for others so you understand therefore what is the meaning of pray in the spirit Uh, Ephesians 6:18 At all times Till now we did not know we were ignorant and the Lord was saying what can I do if you don't read the scriptures and you don't know that's why I keep telling people come to prayer meetings and listen to the word of God you don't want to come to crusader prayer meeting don't come but go where the word is broken and every week you're being fed you're going deeper and deeper your ignorance is being taken away see will help you pray in the spirit why should i pray in the spirit if i just pray otherwise because john 424 says god is spirit god is spirit only see this word only by the power of the spirit can you truly worship other than you be able to so in the stages of prayer personal prayer faces many stages and the first stage you have to deal with indiscipline in your life no discipline in your life no control over your time or other things therefore your prayer life is dry like a field have you seen a field or a garden it's completely dry So you are active crusader, you are active parishioner, but personally, your spiritual life, your connection with Jesus is as dry as show them a garden which is dry. Look at this, completely dried. Or show them the parched land, completely. All that remains there are weeds. These are weeds. They survive, no? Though the land is dry. and you know for us what it means we have to deal with these weeds these are the weeds you have to deal with those weeds therefore when you for a beginner it will take a little problem just for a few days it will take a little problem because your field of prayer is like this man huh and you'll have to go to the well fill the pot pour it out go back to the well pour it out when you pour out you'll see immediately it's absorbed it's not there only 
but go up and down and up and down. It's troublesome, no? So it is with the beginning stage of prayer. It's troublesome. But don't worry. Persist, I told you. See? The first stage of prayer is where flesh is still operating. The flesh will tell you, don't get rid of these weeds. Let it be like that, only you try. The flesh will make you sleep longer. The flesh will make you not get out of your comfort zone. The flesh will not allow discipline in your life. And when you start to pray, the flesh will start distracting you. First stage. And you will find it difficult, almost like a man who fills a pot. No? Take it from the well to the field. Huh? From the well to the field. But you have to continue doing it. Just giving a comparison of the field to show you how it progresses. Now, the field is here. Go to the well. Draw water. Put it. Go back. Draw water. Put it. You feel, I cannot see. Think of the man who has to do this. The farmer who, show them the video. Take it out from the well. This is not once. So many times. And then take the water, go and throw it there. Go back to the well. First stage. And you will find slowly the field absorbing the water of prayer. And cracks will start appearing. See, now it's watered, but see how cracks have appeared. So in the first stage it is important that beside these prayers that you make in the morning, throughout the day you should have some form of prayer. How? Let me again give you an example. Have you seen in the gardens, uh, what is the thing called which keeps on shooting out water like that? It's a sprinkler. Some of them call it drip irrigation. Where it keeps on. What for you? What is the meaning of sprinklers throughout the day? I'll give you the example of sprinklers you should use. So you have to have your prayer, though it is difficult. Plus sprinklers. The sprinklers may be you take one word of God, one word from the Bible and you keep on thinking about it the whole day. You meditate over the whole day. Keep on thinking about it to the point you even by heart it. That's a sprinkler. A second sprinkler, example of second sprinkler is whenever you're free, you listen to a hymn. Hear a hymn. Third example of sprinkler ejaculatory prayer. You know what's the meaning of ejaculatory prayer? Not long prayer. Jesus, I love you. Let's pray. Use ejaculatory prayer throughout the day. Jesus, have mercy on me. Lord, I love you. Oh my Jesus, save me. Oh my Jesus, change me. See? Throughout, not only once, whenever you can. The sprinkler. Jesus, Mary, Joseph, Please help me. One of the sprinklers I used to use that time is just one line from the Our Father. Father, do not bring me to the test. Say that much. Throughout the day. Do not bring me. Because I knew I was weak. I am weak. Father, do not bring me to the test. During the course of the day, at least I would say it about 14 times, 15 times at various times. The sprinkler. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the whole world. That's all. Keep on repeating from time to time. Not long prayer, just one line. Just one word you want to express. Jesus, save my family. Jesus, I love you. And be conscious then. Every two to three hours, take a brief break to just practice the presence of God. You're working anything, just 
just for one minute, two minutes. In silence. Just practice the presence of God. I can give you lots of examples. Like, it's for you, you know. The Spirit will teach you how. Hum a hymn. From time to time. See, you're practicing his presence. So what is happening? Prayers are going on like taking the pot and filling it, taking the pot and filling it. Huh? But the land which is now filled with water and has cracked to them, throughout the day you are ensuring a sprinkler. You understand now? It remains wet. Otherwise, no sprinkler, again it will return to dry nature. Again it will become difficult. Understand? The second stage. Between the first and second stage, some sort of order comes in your prayer. Some sort of order comes. No? But in this stage, you don't take much trouble. It comes. It's almost like a windmill. Have you seen a windmill? Now it is taking water from here and pouring it into the field. The names of each of these are what? What is written there? Praise, repentance, examination of conscience, surrender, all the things. At first I tell you, you'll be very happy to do this. Do you have a video? I hope you're understanding me well. You may go home and say, Brother taught us gardening course. This is only a similarity to show you. No? Son may go and say, let's install that on our land now. Well, there's nothing there. Lift the water, then it empties out into a canal. So therefore in the second stage, it's little easier now. It's not, beginners will always have problems. But if you let go of the habit, you will not make progress. That is why what I taught you, be, never be satisfied, settle for nothing less than God himself. Only God I want, not even anything else. You will be able to continue. So that is, that comes to your life. There are some books sometimes, 5 minutes prayer, 60 minutes prayer, like this. But how long will it go? After some time you start getting bored. So while this is easier than this stage, after some time it becomes mechanical. After many weeks you'll be doing it only in your mind. Ah, where you have to repent of that, repent of that, okay. Uh, I have to praise him. Thank you Lord, praise you Lord. Uh, mechanical is become. No? At this stage, the prayer is become, prayer is become an activity, mechanical activity. Still it's personal prayer, but it's a mechanical one. No? And even when there's no water in the bucket, you're still turning that. Means nothing is coming to you, but you're still turning the giant wheel. Huh? Show the first picture, I like that picture. First you like it. Huh? You'll say, oh, it's good, huh? my life is very good. But I assure you, after some months, you say, it will become boring. You will find often there is no water only coming, but Nam Ke Vaste, since I have to do it. And in this stage, we often ask others to do it for us. They pray for me, you know. In other words, I cannot do my own, you do for me. You understand? No? This is the second stage. So in both these stages, Human nature of the flesh controls you. In other words, your own efforts, your own efforts to pray, you have to put in your own effort. God doesn't want your buckets. He just wants you to enjoy His presence. But when you continue like this, slowly, one by one, the buckets will start disappearing. Suddenly I've stopped praising, I've stopped repentance. 
This is the natural process. It follows at particular stages, one by one thing. You stop with this. So now we have reached the third stage. In the third stage, the buckets are falling off and they are replaced. Silent prayer. And that is the time while you are praying silently, occasionally, suddenly, some bucket comes to your mind. Say, so you suddenly feel like saying sorry to the Lord. You just say it. Suddenly you feel like praising. Or nothing may come, no buckets, but you just enjoy the silence. You start entering into the Sabbath of the Lord, the sabbatical rest of the Lord. In this third stage, you start entering into the rest of the Lord. Here is where the Spirit slowly starts controlling. In this stage, huh? you start longing to pray. You don't even, even you sit and look at a crucifix, no? Or you just enter a chapel. You start feeling the need to pray, need for silence. You start feeling the presence. See, you have entered into the third stage. Why I say the spirit is controlling? Because now spontaneously it happens. Prayer becomes spontaneous now. It is not that you have to force yourself, I have to pray. But it becomes spontaneous. Now, just look at the statue of Our Lady and you feel like talking and just you enjoy silence. The major thing in this is silent prayer. You may suddenly decide to open the Bible and read it, meditate, but the greater part of this third stage of personal prayer is silence. And you just want to be alone. You want to be separated. You want to go off to lonely. Not only every day, sometimes you will just separate yourself from your friends and all that. I just want to go. I want to be with the Lord. But there is a danger in this period. The danger is spiritual pride could come in in this period. Spiritual pride. Okay, now I'm getting direct contact with the Lord. Do you know to pray? I know, I can feel. They cannot pray. They are struggling still. But I've got it. Spiritual pride is a big danger the devil tries to use in this stage. Spiritual lust comes in. You know what's the meaning of spiritual lust? You know what is the meaning of lust, no? Natural lust, you know. Desires, sexual desires, immoral desires. If I touch her, I feel something. This is lust. What is spiritual lust? You start giving importance to certain things, become more important than God. Some rosary you may have brought from Lourdes, that becomes, you will not part with it. See, that rosary is not God. It's become now spiritual lust. You feel nice if I keep this. This is from Naju, oh my God. If anyone asks for it, I'll never give it. This has become God. See? St. John of the Cross says, spiritual lustfulness is when you're aiming for God, but you take things which point out to God and you hold on to it. As if that is God. No? Once the Spirit convicted me about this. I had gone to the grave of a holy man and I'd taken out some mud and I'd brought I kept it at one corner of the altar. One day in silent prayer, the Spirit convicted me. That is the mud from the grave of a holy man, but that's not God. I would not allow anyone to touch it. Not this very sacred. See, it's only pointing to God. See, it cannot replace God. Spiritual, lustfulness, St. John of the Cross called. Also another spiritual gluttony will come in. Spiritual gluttony. You know what is gluttony? No plain gluttony? Eat it. So spiritual gluttony is what? Going from place to place simply just to get more and more knowledge about God. You're exciting your brain. No, you read books, you do this, you do that. Actually, no conversion inside, but you just want to. Father so and so is coming. I run there. Not because of conversion, I want to hear. Or if some other father gives the word, it doesn't affect you. Huh? A spiritual gluttony. I read books after books, any book spiritual I pick up and I own 
spiritual gluttony. See? All diseases come in, but spiritual in nature. So our relationship is developing with God and it's coming quite naturally. In this stage, it is like our prayer life is no longer that how we are watering the field now by the sluice gate. Show them. See the sluice gate. Just lift it and <laughs> water starts coming. See? Can you see? At this stage, you don't have to force yourself. Automatically you'll feel it. Because the spirit is taking control. Personal prayer never remains the same. It is only beginners who feel so boring because they don't know. Personal prayer becomes dynamic. And in later, later stages, the Holy Spirit with His gifts begins telling you and guiding you. He will tell you in advance about what is going on in a person's mind. Just as He told Jesus. And slowly He is developing you into a prophet. See? See? A sluice gate. Up. Whenever say you go to the chapel, you want to pray. And the water just flows, flows. Not like a bucket, not like carrying a pot. Flows. So this can be compared to a sluice gate. Sluice gate water. Huh? Remember this? Sluice gate starts with S. And remember silence also starts with S. But remember in all this, there is also other S's that come. Which are the dangers. Huh? Dangers. You have to be careful about those dangers. Now this is a period also, slowly you will find trials coming in your life. Trials will increase. Especially emotional trials, people close to you, things happening to them, etc. No? It's the last ditch attempt that human nature is making in order to draw you out. No? It's things happening, suddenly a cancer case, suddenly something else, suddenly you lose. Just remain fixed on Jesus. Don't get shaken at this stage. Otherwise you'll start going back in the reverse position. Once you cross this third stage, there is no backsliding. Backsliding can take place still here. Why? He will use certain people whom you are attached to, certain things you are attached to, to draw you. So that the spirit cannot take over. See, I wrote, he slowly takes over. He tries to stop him. That is the crucial point you're crossing. See, so severe trials will come. Severe trials will come, which shake your faith. Make you wonder, why this is happening? Everything happening, why is this happening? No, remember, this is the trial period that must come. Understood, no? Some of the saints have described this period, this stage, by the word metamorphosis. This word metamorphosis in Greek means the time where the worm, the silkworm, suddenly becomes a caterpillar. Have you seen the silkworm? It's all the time eating and eating and eating and eating and eating and eating, becoming fatter and fatter and fatter. And finally one day it stops eating. And it goes into a cocoon. As though it goes into a cocoon and says, Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Next thing you see when the cocoon opens, the saints have described this stage as the metamorphosis. It's a crucial changing stage. You can continue eating, 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 or you can listen to the spirit and change. The spirit then takes full control. So here, God easily comes to you in anything. He comes to you, but it's nothing compared to the fourth stage. The fourth stage is where you feel the overwhelming presence of God. Now you don't want anything. You fear nothing. You don't fear death. You don't fear sickness. You don't fear ups and downs happening. Nothing in this fourth stage where the spirit is in full control. Wherever you are, wherever you go, you feel the presence of God moving with you. Naturally, for a beginner, this will be big talk. They will not understand. You experience it and you will know. You feel the presence of God. And in this stage, you realize, God can never do anything for my bad. Even if he has done something. Before that also, we can know this in theory. 
but at this stage he is a good god he will never do even if when going out there i bang my toe and i start bleeding even at that moment in that stage thank you lord because i know it for my good now even in the previous stages you can do that but you will do it more with the head because you have to do it but here you may not even say thank you loudly but i know my god is with me i feel the presence of god you have begun feeling the wrap of the father's arms around you no more fear of death no more fear of what will happen to me who will be there for me now the spirit assures you god loves you and that love is greater than any other love you don't need anything see that's why i told you at the beginning settle for nothing less than god himself and sometimes members of our own family as jesus said can be our worst enemies because of them distractions can come in attachments you pray for thought you pray for 2000 years even but unless you get detached from all these things you are not going to get make progress in the presence of god 2000 years also you pray nothing you won't even come one inch into the embrace of god unless you detach yourself and by the third and fourth stage god has purified you through all sad experiences etc has purified you and you don't want anything i want you lord i just live for you and you feel his presence even prayer becomes so constant every way you don't have to say any words you're present you're speaking to him as though he's there in everything it's like rain see rain also now all this thing pot thing i had to do bringing the pot of water correct that uh, giant wheel i had to do my effort human nature in the third the sluis gate still my nature, my help is required but in this case it is like rain first it is a drizzle then it becomes a heavy soaking then it is as if you are under waterfall you know what have you ever been under waterfall having bath you can't breathe but yet you enjoy it you don't want to leave that is the experience of the fourth stage you don't want to leave you don't know what is happening you're just caught up but you don't bother about showing it off to others because you don't want to tell to show off i feel it and i pray for them also that they may feel it one day no so it is like rain no slowly becoming from a drizzle soaking you soaking you soaking you soaking you to the point you are there the presence of god is what you can feel see personal prayer has reached that level and you are almost like under the waterfall look at this guy no under the waterfall enjoying himself today dear friends you may not understand much of what i say i don't blame you if you say in konkani kosle bob ke sangta mon kon dana one day you will understand it but this is what personal prayer can do which all your work and mission work can never do that is why the lord said first be with my presence